What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to the next example, we have to take this function here, this piecewise function, we have to graph it, which I'm gonna do over here, and then we have to find these two limits, the limit as x approaches negative two, then the limit as x approaches one. So to find these two limits, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. First is gonna be the long way, which includes graphing it. And then I'm gonna show you a quicker way to do it. If they didn't ask you to graph it and they only asked you to find the limits, if you get a question like that on a test, how you can do it quicker without graphing it. So to graph it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a table of values for each of these three functions here. So starting with this first function, we got x squared minus three. And that's for all the x values that are less than or equal to negative two. So I'm gonna pick negative two, negative three, and negative four. So if I plug in negative two for x here, we'll have negative two squared, which is four, minus three is positive one. Negative three squared is nine, minus three is six. Negative four squared is 16, minus three gives us 13. And I'll just keep it for th uh, at three points for this function and then this next function, we got three plus x, uh, and it's between negative two and positive one. So we'll go negative two, uh, negative one, zero, and then positive one. If I take negative two, plug it in for x here, I'll get positive one. Three plus negative one gives us two, then we'll have three, and then we will have four. Notice that this is just the line there. Another thing I wanna mention is this negative two here, this point, this is going to be a whole. Because notice that at that x value of negative two, this function is not defined there, right? This function is defined here because it's less than or equal to negative two, but notice that this doesn't have that less than or equal to sign. And then ln x is greater than one. And actually with ln x, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put that x value of one so ln of one, we know is zero. And then I'll just uh, graph it roughly here. We know that ln x logarithmic function basically, uh, basically looks like that, where this is going to be one and zero. So I'll just kind of eyeball it on the graph because all of these, uh, if I put like two, three, four, these are gonna be decimals here. So if we, uh, if we take all of these points here, so let's start with the negative two and one, that's like over here. Then we'll have negative three and six, one, two, three, four, five, six, so somewhere like there. And then we'll have negative four and 13, one, two, three, four, five, six. This, uh, this should have been maybe even a little higher. Let's see like right there. Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we got the negative 4, so that's going to be like right here. So this is basically a parabola, right? x squared minus 3. It's a parabola that has a vertex at 0, negative 3, but this function is only defined for all the x values that are less than or equal to negative 2. And then here we'll have negative two and one. And notice that negative two and one, it's the same point as here. So even though this is a whole, because it's the same point as that other function, it's not gonna be a whole. The function's gonna be continuous at that point. So we got negative two and one, then we got negative one and two, just like over here. We got zero and three, and then we got one and four. So this here is a line like that. So this is a parabola, this is a line, and then we have the ln x. And then remember at one and zero, this here is going to be a whole because it's not defined at that x value of one. But we still include that x value of one in the table. So over here, this is gonna be a hole like that. And we know ln x, I had the graph written out before, kind of looks like that. So if we follow that pattern, go something like that. Right, so this parabola is not the best, uh, not the best shape, but nevertheless, it is a parabola that goes down to this vertex of zero and three, and then comes back up. Then we have the line, and then we have that ln x graph. 
And then from here, we can figure out what these limits are. So the limit as x approaches negative 2, what we got to do is see as we approach negative 2 from both sides, what y value are we approaching? Well, if we approach negative 2 from the negative side, notice that we are approaching a y value of 1. And if we approach it from the positive side, we're also approaching that y value of 1. And so because it's approaching the same y value from both sides, this limit is equal to 1. It's basically that y value right there. Now, notice that the limit as x approaches 1 if I, uh, let's actually do it over here. So the limit as x approaches 1, let's actually write out the one-sided limits for this one. So as we approach 1 from the negative side, notice that the y values are approaching what? 4. But as we approach that x value of 1 from the positive side, from this side, Notice that the y values are approaching 0, right? The y value here is 0. And so because we're approaching different y values from each side, then that general limit as x approaches 1 does not exist. So for this one, the one-sided limits, all they both approach that y value 1. So that general limit as x approaches negative 2 does exist. But because we are approaching different y values from both sides at that x value of uh, 1 here, then the general limit does not exist at that x value of 1. Right, so that's kind of the longer way to do it, to actually graph it. Now, if they didn't ask you to graph it and they just asked you for the limits, what you can do is you can just plug in these values into these functions and see whether those y values at those meeting points are going to be the same. So notice at this x value of negative 2, what are the y values going to be? What are the meeting points going to be for both of these functions? So negative 2 squared minus 3, we know that's 1. And if we plug in negative 2 here, 3 minus 2 is 1 as well. So it's approaching that same y value, which is exactly what we got on the graph. So the limit does exist. And then at that x value of 1, we could plug in 1 for this function. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then plug in 1 for this function. Ln of 1 is 0. And because these two y values are different, like we got on the graph, that limit does not exist. So that's just a quicker way of doing it. You can take these meeting points just plug them into the functions and then see what's happening with the y values. If the y values are the same, the limit exists. If the y values are different, then it does not exist.